to ensure your product, your plants, and your pursuits. K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R spells out their full-service insurance services, ranging from commercial to bonds to personal, from life to health, and more. Contact the team at KarcherInsurance.com and let our experience work for you. That's K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R Insurance.com. Contact Karen and the team at Karcher Insurance at 1-844-421-3560. That's 844-421-3560. It's time to check in with Doc Rob and the concierge for better living. We take a real, raw, inside look at healthier living while sharing great ideas and improvements for a better quality of life. The Concierge for Better Living will help informed, intrigued, and interested listeners like you make better choices for yourselves and your loved ones. The Concierge for Better Living with Doc Rob, only on CannabisRadio.com. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every day. Medical marijuana is my last resort, and it helps me when all other drugs have failed. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. Time to fan the fire on some more burning issues, only on CannabisRadio.com. Hey, welcome back to Burning Issues. We're talking to Rick Cusick of High Times Magazine. He had just mentioned that uh, we've got some crazy history behind uh, drug testing, and we should really move towards uh, competence in your job, not what's the content of your urine. Rick, I know you've seen some pretty crazy urine tests uh, over the years. Anything you'd want to comment on? Yeah, I've seen crazy urine tests, but more to the point, I've seen crazy solutions for urine tests. Uh, everybody says, oh, those solutions, they don't work. They don't. Actually, if I really had to take a drug test tomorrow, um, I would probably use one of the, the many flushes of the test, or maybe even a device. You know, you use the uh, default phallus that they have out there, um, the wisnator, the urinators, that kind of thing. But, um, but it, there's a lot of other ways that people try to get out of the drug test, and, and most of them are apothecal. I mean, uh, the best one I've ever heard, the best one, came from no less a source than Kyle Cushman, the great, the great uh, cultivator. And he was telling me about many, many, many years ago, long before he was Kyle Cushman, he had to uh, take a drug test, and he was going to be obviously fail for marijuana. So what he did was he took a little bit of powdered bleach, and he put it inside the tip of his finger. And then when he took his, gave his sample and he was ex- and putting out urine, he put his finger in the stream and the powdered bleach screwed up the, uh, the test. And it, did, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't make it, uh, it didn't make it passable, but it made it, uh, he'd have to do it again. It bought him some time. <laughs> But, Crazy steps you know, we yeah, I mean, these days they're both they're very sophisticated with their flawed testing, and we're very sophisticated with our flawed with our our good solutions. So, um, as I would say, uh, if you are in a workplace drug test and you need to get out of your workplace drug test, the best thing for you to do is abstinence. That's the first thing, okay. And but but if you're a heavy marijuana smoker. If you're a little bit heavy set or something, it stays in the fat cells of your body. It could be in your system for two, three, up to four weeks, maybe even more. So what you got to do is, if that's the case, is you got to look to some of the solutions and some of the uh, the devices that they have that will get you out of there. It's about decreasing the odds. There's no guarantees, but you can decrease the odds to the point where you pass. Exactly, exactly. Hey, you mentioned your daughter's birth, and I know she's a teenager now, and that's got to be uh, pretty wild. Anything you'd like to say about uh, cannabis? Yeah, Here. what a ride. Uh, she's um, she's going to be 18 in three months, and uh, she's graduating high school next month. And my daughter, I've been at High Times, uh, for those of you paying close attention, for 18 years. My daughter is 18 years old, so I've never been a dad, but that I've worked at High Times. 
and I've never been at high times, but that I've been a dad. And to put an even weirder twist on it is I raised her pretty much by myself, so it's just been me and her and marijuana. <laughs> and so I told my daughter really early in the game what was happening. I told her uh, the truth about what I did for a living, knowing she would find out anyway. And I, to be honest with you, I wasn't sure that was a good idea. I, I, I felt it was my best, my best choice it was not lying to her. And actually, by telling her the truth about marijuana at a younger age, telling her what I believed, and telling her that I wasn't supposed to tell her this, but I didn't want to lie to her, what I happened was I got an extra layer of honesty created between us. She suddenly knew that you know, me telling the truth to her was important and that I was willing to take a chance at telling her the truth. And and that closeness, that extra level of honesty has remained intact right up to today. And my daughter and I are very close. I've asked her to uh, not smoke marijuana until she gets to be an older teenager, if she feels like it. I've also told her that if she never smokes marijuana, that's fine with me. And uh, to my best of my knowledge, she still hasn't. But what do I know? I'm her dad. <laughs> it's Let's interesting. Not it's... Let's not be foolish about this. <laughs> I mean, it's a, a part of a much bigger relationship. It really is just a, one small aspect of a multifaceted interaction you guys have. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is, you know what's interesting? My experience about talking about marijuana and uh, a lot of faceted conversations about marijuana with my daughter is it reminded me of the conversations I had with her about religion previous to our conversation about pot. I mean, it was, if, if you're talking about something that somebody, some people believe in and some people don't believe in and some people think is, is wonderful and some people think is, you know, pernicious and, and damaging. And if you're talking about something that people can argue about, you know, passionately and never come to a conclusion, Am I talking about pot or am I talking about religion? <laughs> or guns. Yeah, or guns, absolutely, <laughs> or guns. Another thing that I found, another set of, uh, of um, par- parallels I found in the marijuana conversation. And, uh, and it's funny, you know, talking about marijuana with my daughter has helped me talk to her about religion and has helped me talk to me about guns. Um, no surprise, uh, she, she's not very much of a gun person. She didn't grow up in a gun household. But also, I, I had conversations with her. I said, you know, we have to be open to other people's viewpoints because I'm asking other people who don't know about what I'm talking about to be open to my viewpoint. Oh, uh, what and a great lesson, Rick. That's really super. I, I think that there's a lesson there for all of us. You know, we really have to be open to what we don't agree with. Exactly. Hey, I know you remember the days of hemp times, and I feel like we all thought hemp was going to sort of be our path that kind of medical marijuana took. Do you have any views on that? Wow, what a great question. I never get asked that question anymore, and I really like that question. Um, You know, it's true. Back in the 90s, there was a small renaissance of hemp, but um, even back then, I felt uh, I'm in the business department of high times. Even back then, I felt as a businessman that until we got a domestic crop, that you, the hemp industry was not going to take off because you had to import every you know piece of hemp that you had in the country from China or from for the former Soviet bloc countries. And uh, that put an extra financial burden on the whole thing. And so getting a domestic crop was the goal. We didn't get it back then, and, and hemp kind of died on the vine, so to speak. But now... Um, in the past couple of years, they've legalized marijuana. Uh, most sexily, <laughs> most sexy is the is the uh, legalized marijuana, recreational marijuana, and medical marijuana business. And there are fortunes being made right now, of course. So all those guys went to that right away because it's where the action was. But hemp is sitting in the wings, and hemp is the 800-pound gorilla on the field. Marijuana is huge and it will and once it's legalized throughout this country it's going to create a multi billion dollar industry. It's going to be a benefit for everyone concerned. But you can only sell that marijuana to people who smoke marijuana. You can sell hemp to everybody. 
and you can sell hemp to everybody in the world. And you can, all the reasons we wanted to do hemp in the first place, that it was better for the environment than cotton, that it was better for the environment than petroleum-based synthetics, those are still true. It's environmentally sound, and now that marijuana is legal, very shortly they're going to get to hemp, and you're going to see in the 21st century, the hemp industry is going to create a brand new market that might even dwarf the cannabis industry. Wow, what a pleasant thought, man. I really I really think that's great. Listen, I, everybody... It's all about everybody, options. The options yeah. are coming in, and, and eventually all the options will be taken. Everybody knows you must meet some of the coolest people in the world in your job. Are there any sort of celebrity gossip things you'd be comfortable telling us about or good ah, celebrity gossip? Uh, I don't know. I, um, I, I'm really glad if the uh, uh, last issue of High Times had my interview with Whoopi Goldberg. And uh, I met Whoopi Goldberg recently, and she was uh, actually lives near my house. And um, I, in the course of uh, doing the High Times interview with her, uh, she was gracious enough to open her home up to me for three or four days straight. And I hung out with her, and she has got to be the coolest person I've ever met in my entire life. And if just what you think Whoopi Goldberg is like is exactly what she's like. And um, and she was very, very open and generous at times, which a person in that position does not have to be. You know, it's uh, it's no big shake for... Uh, for Willie Nelson to admit that he smokes weed, <laughs> but but uh, Whoopi works for ABC. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, well, so I was very impressed with Whoopi Goldberg and uh, and her entire uh, and her entire world. And that that interview is stellar, man. I really appreciate you doing it. Uh, she's are a there, great woman. Are there places to? Uh, I guess we better actually get have to call it a day rick gosh i could talk to you all day long man i, I really appreciate anytime, but i'll tell you something um the whoopi goldberg interview we put up in the next uh, few weeks online you can read it online at www.hightimes.com perfect man all right well thanks so much for everybody for joining us on burning issues and my hearty thanks yet again to rick cusick thanks again mitch a pleasure being here Hate to say goodbye. This is Dr. Mitch Earlywine for Burning Issues. We've been chatting with Rick Cusick of High Times Magazine. And we'll be right back with self-compassion in the art of activism. More Burning Issues coming up after we blaze through these words from our sponsors. InternetMarketingNinjas.com is the online dojo of the highly trained and skilled Internet Marketing Ninjas. Disavow documents, reconsideration requests, Panda and Paywin penalties. Let our superior SEO ninjas confront all of your link-related issues. The Internet Marketing Ninjas are equipped to master any marketing exercise, content creation, authorship, link building, PPC, and more. Plus, build more buzz for your brand with our social media marketing strategy. Discover all that the Internet Marketing Ninjas can do for you. Visit the online dojo now at internetmarketingninjas.com. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm going to tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. Cannabis Commerce continues to cultivate new markets for adventurous entrepreneurs. CannabisRadio.com welcomes the adventurous to Cannabis and Commerce. Presented by GreenBiz.com, this show brings together cannabis entrepreneurs and industry experts to discuss today's important cannabis issues. Our discussions will chronicle the challenges faced by cannabis owners and the battles surrounding cannabis nationwide. Cannabis and Commerce, on demand anytime, only on CannabisRadio.com. 
time to fan the fire on some more burning issues only on CannabisRadio.com. And we're back. Thanks for joining us on Burning Issues. Time for self-compassion and the art of activism. 